You're alive. When I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never going to wake up. I checked your pockets for ID, a phone, maybe. I hope you don't mind. But all I found was some loose change. So, want to tell me who you are? Well, it's nice to meet you. And I'm sorry to pry, but any idea why you were floating down the river? What's the last thing you remember? Really? You're a soldier? But why are you out of uniform? Oh, was it a black op? Are you a soldier of fortune? You know what? Don't answer that. I don't think I want to know. But this should be a piece of cake for someone like you. There are some ruins just behind you. Roman, I think. I need you to go in there and see if you can find a guy named Al for me. He went in there a few hours ago, and he hasn't come out. I've been freaking out, wondering if he's trapped, or injured, or worse. I would have gone in after him, but he made me promise to stay here, no matter what. There's no way I'm leaving without him, so I'm just kind of stuck here, waiting. I need... what I mean is, I was hoping you wouldn't mind going in there to find him? If you can do that, I can get both of you back to civilization in my boat. Please? Oh, of course. Sorry, I don't mean to be pushy. I just... What do you want to know? Not much, really. But imagine what you might find in there. Priceless ancient artifacts. Al... Great. So you're ready to go look for Al? Thank you. The entrance is just past those columns behind you. Please, hurry. If you're reading this, it means I've discovered the entrance to an ancient Roman city hidden deep underground. Its existence is long forgotten, all knowledge of it lost, 
except in the Latin inscription here. It reads, You who wish to enter the city, step forth and be judged. The virtuous shall be rewarded with eternal life in paradise. The wicked shall find themselves showered in gold, but in vain, for this shall be their final resting place. Could an underground city have remained a secret for all this time? Could people have survived down there against the odds? It seems there's only one way to find out. If I'm not back in an hour, I'm somewhere on the other side. Consider this an invitation or a warning. Al Worth. this. I'm sorry you had to find me like this. And worse, that you'll suffer the same fate I did. I've spent a lifetime in this place, going around and around in circles, searching for a way out. The inscription was right. There is no way back. In here, there are only two options. Death, or that godforsaken doorway into the past. Mistake of stepping through it. I wanted to set things right. And I tried. I really tried. Whatever I did, I took me right back to the beginning. Don't make the same mistake. Better to end it all now. And find out what awaits you beyond that portal.
Salve, friend. I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? Yeah, you know, agricultural goddess of springtime? You're not from around here, are you? Oh, I see what you did there, changing the subject like that. Nice try. But I'll ask again, who are you and what were you doing in the shrine? Uh, no idea what you're talking about. Oh, wait, are you a bit, you know, not right in the head? <sighs> That's all right, friend. Everyone's welcome here. But listen, most folks seem a bit confused when they get here, but you, you seem very lost, and in more ways than one. So let me make this nice and simple for you. Live by our law here, and we'll all get along just fine. Not laws, law. There's just one, the golden rule, and the punishment for breaking it's, well, it's kind of horrific. But our magistrate insists we take all newcomers to see him, so I guess I'll let him fill you in. So then, are you coming? Follow me. When I first arrived, I couldn't believe there were people living down here. But, as you can see, we've got a nice little community now. Only 23 of us at the moment, if you count the three who are missing. No idea how, since nobody knows a way out. But it's just big and dark enough to get lost in, if you're not careful. Aren't you going to introduce me to your handsome new friend, Galerius? Keep it. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Salve, friend. I'm Galerius. Mine? Uh, I don't think so. I've never seen you before in my life. Oh, I guess how much did I drink last night? Uh, sorry to have bothered you. Oh, and since you seem to be in a hurry, you should try out this device I made. Worked real hard on it. Just attach the pulley to the rope over the lake and hang onto the handles. If it works, it'll be faster than walking. And if it doesn't work, worst thing that can happen is you'll take a swim in the lake. I haven't quite summoned the courage to test it myself. But don't worry, it's completely safe. Probably. All right, see you around. fetch again with incessant labor the water they have lost.
his dribble head and lets out his threefold braying. Livia, would you stop muttering like Medea over a cauldron? You'll scare away my customers. They follow their trades, imitating their previous lives, but they are ignorant. This again. You're in a world of your own, aren't you? shall suffer for the sins of the one. You know, that... But, listen, you live... Not... It's... But our... So then... Follow me. When I first arrived, I couldn't believe there were people living down here. But, as you can see, we've got a nice little community now. Only 23 of us at the moment, if you count the three who are missing. No idea how, since nobody knows a way out. But it's just big and dark enough to get lost in, if you're not careful. Aren't you going to introduce me to your handsome new friend, Galerius? Keep it in your loincloth, Aurelia. I'm taking him to see the Magistrate. That pompous old boar won't be Magistrate for much longer. Anyone who helps vote him out today drinks at my bar for free tonight. Ugh, politics. I'd stay clear of it and her, if I were you. She's... Uh, it's not my place to say. Down on your right is our farm, where I grow all the food you'll ever want. As long as all you want is leek, cabbage, and wheat. Huh. That one usually gets a chuckle. The bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Ah, don't mind Livia. She means well. She's just been in a bad place since... Well, you know, I don't know what happened to her. Up here on your right is the chasm. If you've got a weapon, it belongs way down at the bottom. Up on your left is the forum, where you can visit the market or get yourself patched up in Lucretia's clinic in the Shrine of Apollo. Most of us have almost nothing, just what we had on us when we arrived and what we've been able to make and scrounge up since. And this central plateau is where the Magistrate and the other patricians live, 
so don't expect a warm welcome. Delirious. You're meant to be working the farm, not trudging dirt into the villas. Take it easy, Horatius. I was just taking our new friend here to see the magistrate. Well, he's asked me to escort the newcomer personally. The farm. Go. Now. You'd better go with him. But just remember, they're not like you and me. Don't let them use you. What was that? What did you just say? Uh, I said it'll take some getting used to. Yeah, I'm watching you, farm boy. Greetings, citizen. My name's Horatius. Magistrate Sentius asked me to escort you to him personally. Follow me, please. I expect the Magistrate wants to brief you about the Golden Rule. It shouldn't take too long. He's busy preparing for the election later today. Follow me. The only thing you really need to understand right now is the Golden Rule. Let me see if I can explain it this way. When I was serving in the Legion, if there was a mutiny brewing in one cohort, the legate in charge wouldn't waste time finding the bad apples among hundreds. They just divided us into groups of ten, made us draw straws, and whoever drew the short straw had to be executed by the other nine. Didn't matter whether he'd done anything wrong. One of us in ten would die for the crimes of the Collective. We call it decimation. If that seems like rough justice to you, you're in for a rude shock. Because the Golden Rule is exactly ten times worse. The Magistrate can explain the rest. He's up these stairs. <laughs> Whatever are you wearing? <laughs> Oh, I wish Horatius would stop letting barbarians in here. What do you want? You know, some people say it's the creation of an all-seeing god who's watching everything we do. But what kind of an awful, incompetent god would let my sister go missing on his or her watch? Did you hear that? Curse you, you coward! Where is my sister? What do you have to say for yourself? No response. Nothing. <laughs> That's what I thought. I'm telling you, this mysterious god of ours has to be asleep on the job. Either that, or, like people are saying, it really is just a children's fable my father is exploiting to frighten us into behaving. Oh, and I suppose I'll just have to take the word of a know-nothing barbarian who just arrived, will I? <laughs> I'm Sentia, eldest daughter of the Magistrate, but you'd know that if you'd been invited in here and introduced properly. What are you doing in here, and why are you dressed like that? I trust you can see yourself out. Whatever are you wearing?
we're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? A curious name to match a curious accent. But I digress. I see you have the posture of a military man, though your garments are most peculiar. I pray to Mars your skill set won't be necessary here, but time will tell. Now, you're probably wondering why I summoned you, and I'll get to that. But first, take a look at this wondrous place, would you? A secret city built deep in the mountains many hundreds of years ago. Indeed. More importantly, consider the miraculous community we've built here over the last seven months. Twenty-two complete strangers brought together by the fates, living and working together in our own little paradise. And in all that time, not a single sin has been committed. No fights, no theft, nothing. Have you ever witnessed something so extraordinary as a city without sin? Nor could I until I came here. But the reason for this, this miracle is as simple as it is terrifying. If even one person commits a sin here, every last one of us will die. You see, the builders of this place, whoever they were, left inscriptions warning, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. From what we can gather, breaking the law here will anger the gods and provoke a terrible punishment. Like the curses of Medusa and Midas combined, turning us all to gold. We've come to call it the Golden Rule. It's extraordinary that we've survived as long as we have, and each day I grow more and more afraid that our time in the sun is almost up. And now it seems that day is finally here. All that matters is that somebody in this city is about to break the golden rule. Why else would Proserpina send you now? Unless you and I can stop them, our doom is assured. I know that's a lot to take in, and you look like you have questions. Please, ask away. You see, in my search for a way to save my people, I learned of an ancient ritual to Proserpina, the goddess of the cycle of life and renewal. It's said to open a doorway in time, so that if the unthinkable happens, one person can pass through it and travel back to the past. And when I saw you arrive in a flash of light from the goddess's shrine, I knew that person was you. You don't belong in our time, do you? Two thousand years? That is unfathomable. Please, tell me, in your time, what did you see? What had become of us, of this city? I have imagined it our downfall a thousand times, but it still breaks my heart to hear the truth of it. Do you ever stare at a problem for so long that you can't see it for what it is anymore? What's needed here is a fresh pair of eyes. The less I prejudice the independence of your investigation, the better. So you know about that already. It's a devastating loss, of course, but that was over three weeks ago, and whatever happened to her, it didn't break the golden rule. So I don't think it's connected with our imminent demise. 
Still, if you happen to find her and return her to me, I would be eternally grateful. Well, all right. There are those who wish to vote me out of office so that they can pursue their own misguided political agenda. Frankly, their selfishness and recklessness risk destabilizing the entire city. I would be looking very carefully at them if I were you. intelligent question. There was a good deal of debate about that in our first weeks here. Does it refer to crimes or to some other ill-defined wrong? Of course, everyone agrees on the basics. No theft, no assault, and certainly no murder. But beyond that, it was more difficult to reach a consensus. What about lying, insulting someone, blasphemy, trespass, trying to escape, bribery, Infidelity, suicide. As magistrate, I had to exercise leadership, and so I made a decision. We must uphold the laws of the Empire to a standard never before seen. And we must honor the peace of the gods, the sacred accord between the gods and the people of Rome. It is only by offering the gods the proper respect that we may prosper, as Rome has for centuries. Barbaric? Barbaric? What are you talking about? The Empire is the most civilizing force in the known world. Rome is a beacon of light in the darkness. For 800 years, she has borne great statesmen, philosophers, poets, artists, and engineers. We have comprehensive laws protecting the rights of our citizens, which have unified countless warring tribes all across the Mediterranean and beyond, from Gallia to Judea. All our citizens are treated the same, regardless of the color of their skin or their sexual preference. Can you say the same? When our people are starving, they are given food rations, and when they are wronged, they have the right to bring the guilty party before the magistrate. Our laws forbid treason, murder, assault, and rape, as well as theft and arson, and so on. No other civilization in the world is so advanced, and you have the, the hubris to call us barbaric? I have made my pronouncement on the subject. Unfortunately, there are still those here who resist, whispering blasphemous and treasonous lies in the shadows. I would be keeping a close eye on them if I were you. Ah, good. So, are you with me? Can I count on you to figure out who's about to break the golden rule? Wonderful. Now, I need you to investigate the city, talk to everyone, help them if it'll win their trust. I authorize you to enter private homes and inspect possessions and documents, unless, of course, you're asked to leave. Figure out who the culprit is, and as soon as you have a name, come back and tell me immediately. Oh, and one last thing. If I were you, I'd start my investigation by visiting Lucretia at the Shrine of Apollo in the Forum. I heard wailing from there not long ago. Seems like something's not right. me. I just live here.
citizen. On your best behavior, I trust. Hey, Horatius. How's it feel knowing your man's doomed to lose the election today? If you're trying to goad me into an argument, it won't work. I'm a stoic, remember? If the old man couldn't even keep his own daughter safe, how can anyone trust him to keep us safe, eh? Why do I get the feeling you lot had something to do with Centella's disappearance? That's it. Blame everyone but yourself. As if I'll be afraid of you, little man. What were you two talking about? Don't play dumb. I saw you. Having a shady little chat with old man Sentius up on his balcony. What's he offering you? Money? Favours? What's your vote worth to him? What else would you be murmuring about on election day? Mark my words, Maliolus is gonna be magistrate by the end of the day. And if I tell him you sided with that feeble old has-been, that you've been trying to undermine his hard-won victory, you'll have picked the wrong patron. Got it? Oh, you just made a big mistake. Maliolus is gonna hear all about this. And he'll make you suffer the tortures of Tartarus while you're still alive. Sturka Medite. to the cistern, are you? Nobody's told you about Hannibal? Ugh, why do I have to do everything round here? So, there was this guy called Hannibal, right? Funny accent. He used to go down into the cisterns looking for junk he could clean up and sell. One day, a few weeks back, he comes out and tells me the cisterns are haunted. Said he could hear spirits wailing. Of course, nobody believed him, because who trusts a Carthaginian, right? Anyway, a few days later, he goes back in. And hours go by, and he hasn't come back out, yeah? So I go down after him, and it's dark. But in the distance, I can just make out his body sprawled out on the ground, and hunched over him was something that made my blood run cold. No word of a lie. I saw... A creature. Like the corpse of a man who'd been flayed. And it was eating Hannibal. If it was a man, maybe. But I swear on my life this was no man. More like a Strix. Or some Versipellus that feeds on human flesh. I didn't stick around to see which. What any sane person would have done. I legged it out of there and put a sign at the door to warn the others.
Good idea. and may Vesta watch over you. I'm Equitia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Oh my. I take it people are quite direct where you're from. I suppose it's quite charming in its own way. Usually, however, you wouldn't simply march up to a Vestal priestess and without due formality or courtesy ask, what is your story? The proper approach would be to arrange an introduction through a mutual acquaintance in high office, by which time you would already know how to address me. And then you would find a way to satisfy your curiosity rather more indirectly. But to be honest, I've often thought what an unnecessarily formal way to communicate that is. So, let's do it your way. You just keep being yourself and ask whatever you like. It'll be a refreshing change. charged with keeping the sacred flame in Rome's shrine of Vesta burning. I take it you know who Vesta is? Vesta is the mother goddess of hearth and home, and the guardian of the Roman people. Put simply, I tend to the temples, ensure their sanctity is preserved. Why? So that we continue to honor our gods, invite their blessings, and not bring their wrath down upon us, of course. It's vital that we keep them appeased and remain in their good graces. See you again soon, I hope. Keeping an eye on things, Horatius? As always, Priestess. Any news about Centilla, Navia, or Kabash? No sign of any of them, I'm afraid. But we do have a newcomer. Strangely dressed fella. Funny accent, too. A traveler from a faraway land, then? Seems that way. Then let's make sure he feels welcome, shall we? Of course, Priestess. lost a patient and a dear friend. Yulia, she was a good woman. She was poisoned. She came in here frothing at the mouth. Normally I'd treat her with resin of sylphium, a rare plant which is perfect for this sort of thing. And I knew Dacius had some at his market stall right around the corner. So I ran over there, but he just looks at me with this evil smile and says, that'll be a thousand denarii. There was no way I could afford that, and he knew it. 
Then that toad shrugs and says, supply and demand. I guess you don't value your friend's life that highly. Anywhere else, I'd just pay a thug to steal it from his stall. But there's no way I can do that down here with the golden rule. So all I could do is come back here and just watch her die. I kept on apologizing. And now I'll never know who poisoned her or how they managed to do it without breaking the golden rule or why she cursed that snake's cruel black eyes with her dying breath. Well, unless you have the power to bring someone back from the dead, there's really just one thing you can do. Get me that sylphium resin. I'm going to have another patient in here soon. Could be in the next day or in the next hour. And I will not allow this to happen again. I don't care how you get it, but you have to make it happen. Because if I lose another patient this way, I swear to the gods below, not even the golden rule will stop me from marching up to that genetric comfortuto and scratching his eyes out. Then you'd better get me that sylphium quickly, hadn't you? Stranger, and welcome to our idyllic little slice of the Empire. I'm Dacius. Terrible shame what happened to Yulia, but we just have to carry on, don't we? Certainly. All I ask is a reasonable price of a thousand denarii. That's hardly my concern. But if you get a job, work hard and save your coins, you should be able to afford it within, say, five years? Oh, you have it. I'm impressed. Pleasure doing business. Can I help you with anything else? Very well, another time. you arrived when you did. Oh no, sorry, I don't mean to worry you, but no, that is definitely not normal. There was one other person who claimed she could hear the statues talking to her, but that was Nevia, and uh, she went a little mad. Anything about what? Sure. What do you want to know? Hemlock, I believe. Do you really want to know? I mean, if somebody poisoned her, then surely they would have broken the golden rule, and so maybe it's best we don't discuss it. seen her in months. She's not allowed to leave Maliolas' villa, and they are quite secretive. Gladly. Well, come back if you get sick or injured. Day or night, I'll do what I can.
fellow traveler from a faraway land. Greetings and salutations. Greetings, I'm Georgius. It gladdens me to see another foreigner in our midst. We must stick together, you and I. And I must say, my sartorial friend, your clothing is most extraordinary. Leather boots in place of sandals, trousers with precise stitching, and such a curious design. I have traveled distant trade routes from the markets of Damascus to the farms of India. And never have I seen anyone dressed quite like you. Tell me, I must know. From which exotic part of the world do you hail? Then you are an explorer, like me. Wonderful. You must have many stories to share. I cannot wait to hear them. We will have much time here to get to know one another. But for now, do you require assistance? I know you do not require clothing, so information perhaps? My story? How kind of you to ask. I am a tailor and I run the humble shop in the forum. You mean to say, with all the turmoil and terror of the golden rule and so few customers, why bother setting shop at all? I'll tell you, it is precisely because of the golden rule that I wish to remind my friends of the importance of looking one's best. I say, the more of our customs we preserve down here, the more we can preserve a semblance of normality, the better our chances of keeping our heads. Don't you agree? Oh, and there is another reason too. If we all end up as golden statues for future generations to marvel at, I don't know about you, but I would like to look my best. <laughs> a good question. A very good question indeed. And I would be happy to tell you if only I could remember it clearly myself. Hmm. I remember I had just been to Rome to sell an extraordinary selection of wares. And drowning in coin, I decided to celebrate my success. I rented a prestigious villa by the Tiber, invited over a few select friends, and we began making our way through some of the most exquisite wine money could buy. Quite a lot of it, in fact. Now, I have had visions and awoken in strange places before. I have even found myself naked in the desert sands more than once, but none of that compares to this. This time, I remember people screaming then falling into a void as empty as time before creation, gasping for air, and then nothing. When I regained my faculties, I was lying naked by the banks of the Tiber, gods know how many miles from my villa. Indeed, I'm lucky I was carrying a little extra weight. <laughs> I believe it kept me afloat. In any case, it seems I'd been rescued and resuscitated by a benevolent stranger. I went to find firewood for his campfire, stumbled across a cave, and discovered that trapdoor temple. And here I am. Anything you like. I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend.
do something. A man arrived in the baths, a real nasty sort, with his face all covered up, and he's got a weapon. You have to do something, or he's going to break the golden rule. Fabia, but now's not the time. Are you going to help or not? Thank you. He's still in there, somewhere. I have to hide. Find me in this empty shrine when it's over. Hear what? What? We don't have time for this. I have to go. It's collapsing! No! Oh God, she's dead. Did anyone see that? The whole shrine just collapsed on her. Oh Fabia, why did you have to go in there? Poor sweet girl. Stop right there. I'm looking for Tiberius Quinctius Crispus, otherwise known as Quinctius. Do you know where he is? I'm not sure I believe that, so allow me to explain something to you. I am here with orders from Emperor Nero himself to find and execute the cultist Quinctius for terrible crimes against the Empire. So, if you tell me the truth, I will allow you to live. But if you lie to me, or otherwise obstruct the Emperor's business in any way, I will put this arrow through your chest. Is that understood? Thank you. Now tell me, who are you people, and what is this place? A small community. <laughs> I was told Quinctius was a cultist, but I never thought he'd be foolish enough to lead me right to the heart of his mystery cult. Oh, don't play coy with me. I don't care if you're worshipping Bacchus, Magna Mater, or Christ. You lot are all the same to me. Always sneaking off to your secret sanctuaries, indoctrinating each other with your little mantras. The Emperor may have tolerated your activities up until now, but after what Quintius did, those days are numbered. You say that, but if you're not a cult, then why go to such great lengths to keep this place a secret? So you admit you're not allowed to leave. Threatening me is not going to help you. But in any case, that sounds an awful lot like a cult to me. And I saw the inscription saying, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. I take it this is some kind of mantra, you all believe? Ugh, a distinction without a difference. You've clearly been indoctrinated into this nonsense. Now tell me, where did you lot get enough gold to make all these statues? to practicing human sacrifice too. You people disgust me. 
Of course you'd say that. But that's what your kind do, isn't it? Our God told us to do it. It's all clear to me now. The secret sanctuary, the indoctrination, the mantra, the human sacrifice. Your cultists, there's no doubt in my mind. What baffles me is how a person can believe in something with such a zeal. They just can't see what they've become. However, you still have a chance to redeem yourself by telling me where Quintius is. Do not waste it. Very well, here's what I know. He's a 40 to 50 year old man with distinctive eyes, one green and one blue. He's also known to have delusions of grandeur. The Emperor says he and his cult, your cult, are responsible for starting the fire which burnt half of Rome to the ground and killed thousands in the process. All I know, all I care about, is that the Emperor believes he is guilty and wants him dead. The details are not my concern. This is your last chance. Are you going to tell me where he is or not? to me. Do you have any last words? There's a simple explanation for that. I lied. But if you want to know the truth before you die, here it is. Once I'm done with you and Quintius, I intend to kill every last one of you wretched degenerates. And I can think of nothing I'd enjoy more. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Name's Rufius. Better watch your step. Can't talk long. Got to stay sharp, but... Uh, family's from Seleucia on Tigris. Babylon province. But I've been roaming a long time now. Even joined the legions. The sixth. The one they call Ironclads. Same way as everyone else. Okay. Because we're all in grave danger. Is it not obvious? Mm. Magistrate made me toss it in the chasm. Stupid. Going to have to improvise now. 
If you were dealing with what I am, you wouldn't be either. None of your business. In Troy to Ipsum come in Shula. If we have to. If I did, do you think we'd be having this conversation? Hmm. I'll tell you this much. I hate the fact that my survival depends on the common sense of other people. And you know what I'm talking about. I mean, all these people just bumble along like nothing's wrong. Well, we're one bad decision away from being wiped out. Like the last lot of people who lived here. Seems like I'm the only one ready for what's coming. Whatever that is. And when it hits, it's everyone for themselves. You've been warned. I don't know. But did you ever get the feeling some of these statues are watching us when we're not looking? Like they're waiting for something. I don't like it. Of course I am. Meliolus. Not sure I trust Sentius. Couldn't even protect his daughter in a city without sin. How's he going to protect us? No. Whatever. Hey friend, I'm Octavia. Welcome to life under the golden rule. It's a ghastly thing, is it not? How are you faring so far? Ah, another stoic, perhaps. We all need something to help us through times like these. We've all been where you are now. I remember when I first arrived. I used to lay awake at night contemplating the big questions. Why am I here? Is there a way out? What is the golden rule and who or what is responsible for it? I still don't have any of the answers, I'm afraid. I don't think anybody does. But I'm happy to share with you what I've learned. Here, in this place, the Magistrate has me earning my keep by cleaning and pruning the gardens. It's not quite how I expected my life to go. I used to live in a lovely villa on the banks of the Tiber. I was even betrothed to a handsome young man from a prominent family. But long hours of menial labor for the good of the community has its own charms too, I suppose. Oh, much the same way as many of the others. When the fires came to Rome seven months ago, my family and I fled for the Tiber, hoping to escape on a barge. We were among the fortunate ones with enough coins for passage, but unfortunately, 
There were a lot of desperate people, and they boarded before we could depart. A scuffle broke out, and I was pushed overboard. The last thing I remember was the water rising up to hit my cheekbone. I woke up by the river, near that shrine, and stumbled across this place. Oh, that's all right. I'm sure it's all part of God's plan for me. Oh yes, of course, a slip of the tongue. If you like. Hmm, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. I think about those words a lot. I'd like to think that if we all love our neighbors as ourselves and do to them as we'd have them do to us, then we'll all be fine. But on the other hand, I was always taught the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth, and that all of us are born with a tendency towards sin. And that's where I get stuck. Is it true? Are we born with a tendency towards sin? You don't think that's a little naive? Hmm. I suppose you've never seen what I've seen. Innocent men and women torn apart in arenas while thousands of Romans look on and cheer. Hmm. I wish I shared your faith. Please, please keep that to yourself. I know you're not from around here, but oh, things are very difficult for us right now. There was a terrible fire in Rome last year, and our emperor decided to make us his scapegoats. There were executions. It was horrible. Oh, thank you. You have no idea how much I appreciate that. All right, well, it was lovely to meet you. I look forward to getting to know you better over the coming months. And if you ever... I can't believe this is how it ends. Oh, no. No. No, 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 no. Wolf Pierce, what are you doing? Get back from there. If you lose your balance, you'll fall. That's the idea. What? Why? Why would you want that? Why do you think I'm stuck for the rest of my life working for a man who treats me like an animal? I know, I know things are hard for you right now. They're hard for all of us. We're all in this together, Alpheus. Please, please just think this through. If you do this, it could be the sin that seals all of our fates. Is that what you want? I'm sorry, but I just don't care anymore. Please, Ulpius. Help him. If he goes through with it, it could be the end for us all. I don't know what to do. I've never had to deal with this sort of thing. Please, you need to talk to him. I don't know, but it's a crime for slaves to take their own lives. And a debt bondsman isn't far off. Thank you. And please, Choose your words carefully. Let me guess. You're going to lecture me on how suicide is a crime against the Empire. I screwed up my life. That's what's wrong. I borrowed money and when I couldn't pay it back, I wound up in debt bondage. I'll be stuck slaving away for that Culus Cumulatis Maliolus for the rest of my life. I am out. Wherever you are, Santilla, my love. I'm sorry. Olpius, no! I... I can't believe he went through with it. I... Oh, Lord. That poor lamb. Well, I suppose it means suicide isn't a sin under the Golden Rule. So I guess that means whichever god is responsible for it, it isn't mine. I'll have to let everyone know what happened. And I guess Maliolus will have to clean up the mess in his villa. It's of his own making, after all. And I'd best pray for poor Ulpius.
elected your magistrate. Magistrate. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm delighted and deeply honored to be elected your magistrate. And now, <coughs> and now, uh, I make this solemn. Did you just leap into my villa from the balcony a hundred feet above? That was either extremely reckless or impressively clever. Well, why have you risked life and limb to see me? I'm Maliolus, and if it wasn't for this interruption, I'd be practicing my victory speech for the election later today. I'm glad you asked. I'll finally restore freedom to this city, just as I've been promising. These good people have suffered long enough under Sentius's tyranny. By declaring there's no such thing as the Golden Rule, it's a children's fable exploited by Sentius to frighten us into submission. Wait, don't tell me you've fallen victim to that monstrous lie. The person making a claim bears the onus of proving that claim. Can you do that? Can you prove the golden rule is real? Nonsense. There's no way you can prove that. If it was real and you'd seen someone break it, then you'd be dead already. What? Oh, I see what's happening here. Another poor, vulnerable soul taken in by Sentius's machinations. He won't get away with this much longer. Surely, you're not one of those people who believes everything you read. As if a lie could be transformed into the truth by the simple act of writing it down. disagree. I'll be guided by what is best for the city's people, and that means giving them the freedom to do as they wish. True, but that is simply because you are mistaken. I'm afraid not. We're stuck down here together, for better or worse. We're all going to have to make the best of it. The children's fable exploited by Sentius to scare us all into doing what he wants. I trust you can see yourself out. Through the door this time, there's a key just beside it. What are you doing in here? Can't you see this woman? She needs the resin. What? Quick, give it here. 
Yulia, Yulia, you need to swallow this. Here, let me help you. Hopefully, in a moment, she should be able to breathe normally. That was extraordinary. How did you know she needed this exact thing? And at this exact moment? Are you some kind of oracle? A what? I'm sorry, I must have misheard you. I think it's your accent, because it sounded like you said, time traveler. But whatever kind of traveler you are, that was like the gods hearing my prayers and intervening. You just saved a person's life, and you should be proud of yourself. She might even be able to thank you herself in a few moments. And maybe she can tell us who poisoned her, and who she meant when she was muttering about that snake's cruel black eyes. In the meantime, I'm happy to help you with whatever it is you need. That's a shame. Thanks again for saving Yulia's life. Apollo smiles upon you. Oh, it's you. Sorry, I'm still a bit out of it. Uh, but thanks for trying to help me, I suppose. Was there something you wanted? Lucretia says I'm supposed to rest. As much as I'm grateful that you tried to help me, it's just not safe for me to talk about it. Please, no more questions. The Golden Rule. <laughs> That's the least of my worries. The gods may be cruel, but Maliolus and Claudia are far crueler. Please, just... Leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, persistent as nemesis, aren't you? I can tell you, but it's a long saga. All right. I'd been here about a week. When it dawned on me, I'd be trapped here for the rest of my life. I could hardly breathe, and I knew I had to get out somehow. So when my new friend Aurelia offered me a secret way out, I would have done anything. And then I learned her asking price. A thousand denarii. She was supposed to be my friend. I told her it would take me years to save up that much. So she suggested I take out a loan from Maliolus. And I did. I had to sign an agreement, saying I'd work off the debt over 30 years. But I figured I'd be out of here so soon it wouldn't matter. I paid Aurelia, and she gave me her so-called way out. Do you want to know what it was? You figured it out already. I wish I'd been so astute. Drink this, she said and you'll be out of here in no time. Of course, I demanded my money back, but she refused. She pointed to a sign on her tavern saying, let the buyer beware. Then she just looked at me with those cruel black eyes and she, she laughed. She immediately told Maliolus I'd tried to escape without paying him back, only, he didn't seem upset or surprised at all. In fact, he just thanked her. And that's when I realized the two of them had planned the whole thing from the beginning. Of course. I went to Sentius and begged for help, but he said the law was clear. I'd signed over my labor for 30 years, and there was nothing he could do. I thought about resisting, too. But Maliola said if I didn't submit, I'd break the golden rule. 
And I couldn't be responsible for all those deaths, so he locked me in his villa, confiscated everything I owned as collateral, and made me wear immodest, humiliating outfits while I worked day in, day out. His wife Claudia was just as bad. She sent me to work on an endless stream of futile, demeaning tasks. I'd be on my hands and knees, scrubbing the floor clean for hours, only for her to pour slop on it and hiss, you missed a spot. Those two took everything from me. <sighs> but they forgot to confiscate one thing, my hemlock. I just wanted it to be over, but it seems I messed that up too. Should have drunk all of it. I brought it on myself. I trusted one of the most callous human beings I've ever met and tried to swindle the other. I don't know how I could have been so stupid. When I've recovered, I expect their thug Domitius will come for me. He'll escort me back to their villa and I'll be right back where I started. Only this time, I won't be able to lull myself to sleep at night with the thought of a permanent solution. Honestly, it would have been better if the poison had been allowed to run its course. I doubt it. It seems this is the fate the gods have chosen for me, for trying to escape. At least until someone breaks the golden rule. Huh. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. A lot. But it doesn't matter. I... I made a suicide pact with Ulpius last night. He's in exactly the same position as I am. Maliolus and Aurelius set the same trap for him a month after they did it to me. He and I are in this together. He's probably already thrown himself from the bluff into Maliolus's villa by now. If so, I'd never be able to live with myself, knowing I broke my promise to him. I doubt you could make it up to the bluff in time. I don't know who you are or why you seem so determined to help me, but thank you. All right, but please don't take too long. All right, thank you again for saving my life. in the baths. A real nasty sort, with his face all covered up, and he's got a weapon. You have to do something, or he's gonna break the golden rule. Thank you. He's still in there. I have to hide. Find me in this empty shrine when it's over. What? Why? All right, um, fine. Come and find me in my bakery instead. Please be careful. My name's Dooley. I live here now because I got in trouble and they... They said they had to lock me up. I don't know. I don't remember things so good. I think it's just because I was... 
Looking for treasure. Yes. But I wasn't. I was just looking. They said I did it. More than once. But I can't remember things so good. Then they called me mean names. They called... They called me a liar, Billy. Yes. They said I have to live here now. And gave me this letter. But I'm not good with words. Do you... Do you think you could read it for me? Does it say? Uh, my treasure. My friend Hannibal used to look after me. He said he always would. But then he died. It was very sad. He said if anything ever happened to him, I had to find something very precious hidden away. He gave me this key and made me promise to keep it safe until I found the treasure. But I couldn't find it. All I remember is he said something about the cisterns. But when I went up to the high one, they put me in here. Now nobody looks after me. Except my friend Galerius. And Ek. Ek. Priestess lady. She's a nice lady. Hannibal s s said I sh shouldn't give it to anyone I didn't trust. But maybe you could help me get out of here. Then I, I would trust you a lot. Galerius already tried that. He said the magistrate wouldn't listen, no matter what. Like, Galerius? He's nice. I like Galerius. He made me a doll and everything. If you help make him magistrate, he can get me out of here and I can give you the key to my treasure. Hannibal said it was in the cisterns. I can't remember what it was, just that it was way up high and very precious. Bye bye. Hello. Have we met before? Bye bye. Hello. Bye bye.
Sisyphus, Handsome. attack or pursue the stone that always returns. Just as the ocean accepts the rivers of all the world, so this place accepts all the souls. But it does not notice the crowds that come. The bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Some crowd the forum, some the house of the ruler of the depths. Others follow their trades, imitating their previous lives. They never do. There is only a downward path gloomy with fatal yew trees. It leads through dumb silence to the infernal regions. Help me. You cannot help me. I have seen things. A pattern, a terrible pattern. It is better for you if you remain ignorant. Pandora's box must stay closed. I'll say no more. The bloodless shadows. This is their punishment. The newly 